Today, I'm going to be revealing the truth about my extreme productivity system. Now, this is not an extreme system. It's a system for extreme productivity, meaning even an average dummy like me can still learn new things and get better at a skill with a very small amount of time per day. I mean, let's be honest. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, the brightest light bulb in the light bulb store. I'm just kind of... Eh, I have some serious character flaws that make it very hard for me to get anywhere with my goals. Specifically, I get bored, I switch what I'm interested in about every day, I'm not very consistent, it's very challenging for me to do something consistently, and I don't have some magical talent from birth. By no means, I think I've kind of struggled my way to learning how to code and kind of being okay at software development. Maybe I'm kind of being harsh on myself, but the reality is, this system can work for anybody. Now, I'll be honest, some of these are gonna be obvious, like be consistent and avoid burnout, the same stuff you've heard over and over again. But I'm going to give you some actual practical steps to do this in your daily life and what you can do starting today. And it comes down to one principle, which is doing something daily is more effective than doing it, say, once a week. Fairly obvious, but let's say you wanted to learn piano, seven hours on Saturday is not going to be as good as one hour a day. Similarly, if you want to, you know, get some muscles, you're not going to work out seven hours on Saturday. You're going to do a little bit each day or, you know, every other day or whatever it might be. But that consistency truly helps because over time it adds up. And I've thought about this so many times. If you just do an hour a day of whatever you're trying to achieve, in the course of a year, you've collected 365 hours, which is like nine weeks of full-time work. 40 hours a week for nine weeks. But it's not just nine weeks of full-time work, it's nine weeks of the most potent focused time. Imagine if you went to work and you focused from beginning to the end. That's what it would be like if you just did an hour a day of purely focused time. So you can actually get quite a bit done in just an hour. So this is basically the system I've been using for learning anything I want. You know, when I was in school, I spent an hour before school to study C programming. It didn't take long for me to actually learn more doing that than what I would learn in class for multiple hours a day. It's because that hour was the most focused, it was the most productive of the entire day. So the secret here is that you want to optimize for learning per period of time. So if we just made up some arbitrary point system to quantify your learning, let's say if you did it as good as you could, it would be 100. And if you basically learn nothing, it would be zero. If you study something for say eight hours, and each one of those hours, you have about 50% focus, 50 points, you're going to have a total of 400 points. Well, what if you did the same exact thing for four hours, but you did 100% on each of those 400 points still? You can see that it doesn't really matter the total amount of time you focus and learn something. What really matters is how efficient your time is being spent and your total learning across those hours. By optimizing for your learning rate, how much you learn in a particular period of time, let's say an hour, that is going to get you where you want to go faster. If you can optimize your rate of learning and get as much done in that hour as you can, you're going to get much farther than if you study all day at a very low focus, slow rate. In my experience, the way it works is that first hour, I can usually give it a 100. If I study a second hour, it's like 80. A third hour, 70 and 60. And it just goes down by hour eight. I'm basically just sitting there. I'm not actually learning or retaining any information. So that time is wasted. There is a scenario when studying more than an hour a day makes sense. And that is if you are optimizing for total amount learned, you know, if you need to learn something very quickly, giving 100 in that first hour and then 80 in the second hour, you get a total of 180 across two hours, which is like 90 per hour. <laughs> not trying to make this like too mathematical or conceptual, but I think for most people, it would make sense just to get that 100% hour and do that every day for a long period of time. The next thing I wanna talk about is, let's say you start that hour, what do you actually do? Well, you should figure out what's the best way you learn, and this might take some experimenting. Maybe it's through videos, maybe it's through books, maybe it's through, you know, Stack Overflow, just reading, conversation or maybe it's through coding examples that is really up to you and you can experiment to see what feels the most effective then you have to think about how do you actually log that information 
Where do you put it? How do you organize it in your brain? For me, the system that has been working very effectively is counting how many words I write a day. You can kind of quantify information in words, so you can have a better idea of how much you're learning or how much you're getting done if you see how many words you've written. Now, some of you might not be writers, that's fine. It doesn't necessarily have to be well-polished work, but that's my way of keeping track of my learning, basically taking notes. So I'll show you a real example of this for my C and C++ bootcamp I've been working on, which hopefully I'll be releasing here very soon. What I do is I basically wake up, I pick a topic that I want to learn about, and let's just go with types, you know, the basic stuff. And I start writing everything I can about that subject. I break each one of these sections up into about 5,000 words. And this tool I'm using here is called Notion, which is just a way for me to keep track of stuff. So you can see this one's 5,500 words. And I can go through here. And I like this because it's very code friendly. You can just use like three back ticks to write a code section. And that makes it very easy for a software developer to take notes. But yeah, you can see, you can throw pictures in there and examples. And yeah, it's pretty thorough. And that's because I'm trying to actually, you know, make something that is public facing. Yours doesn't have to be as fancy as this, but I feel like having this way of outputting all my knowledge and information, it's a little bit more organized and actually more structured in my brain. So this is what I do. And this is what all of these look like. So this one here is, you know, roughly 5,000 words and you can see multiple examples of whatever it might be. There's only so many concepts in a programming language. So if you just keep doing this in theory, eventually you're going to cover the majority of important things. Now I decided to actually track how much I've been writing because I wanted to see what I was doing. Up until I started tracking, I just kind of did this in an unofficial way where I would just try to focus on whatever I'm studying a little bit each day. But I really wanted to see if I actually tracked words, what it would look like with the goal of writing a thousand words each day, which for me, I think of 500 words to be a topic and a thousand words would be like two topics. So, you know, one might be on arrays, one might be on 2D arrays. And obviously starting out, I was pretty dang motivated. And also I was starting with some of the more beginner content. So getting a few thousand words a day wasn't too big of a deal. You can see there's a few days I kind of went on some writing sprees. And that's usually when I'm in flow and I can basically cover a topic from beginning to end. There are days where things are a little bit more challenging if I'm studying something new. Like April 15th, I only did 540 words, which was not my thousand goal, but I had a lot of stuff going on that day. It was a new topic and I really didn't get that much time to do this. If I really focus and it's a topic that's not completely out of my comfort zone, I can usually get a thousand words. Like let's say on April 12th, I did a little over a thousand. I can usually do that in an hour or two. If the topic's really easy, sometimes I can get even more words written, you know, maybe 2000. And this day, April 5th, I already had some notes written from a while ago. So I basically just edited those notes. So that's why this is much higher. It really didn't take that long. It's not like I spent 10 or 20 hours, you know, writing that single day. So in this example, I already have 42,000 words written for just C programming, which is quite a lot of information. For reference, the first Harry Potter book, I think is roughly 100,000 words. So I'm almost to 50,000. It's like writing half of the Harry Potter book. This is just how things work for me. You can obviously modify this to whatever you like. You don't even have to write if that's not your thing but there has to be some way that you can internalize that information. If it's not writing and describing things in words, the most likely alternative is going to actually be writing code examples, which makes sense if you're trying to learn a programming language. So instead of wasting your time writing, describing what you're coding, you could spend the time actually just writing out examples showing various inputs and what the expected output would be almost like test cases in a way, but it doesn't have to be so formal where you're like, Oh, here's every single scenario, but you know, writing out a giant program that shows different inputs and outputs and just basically testing the different scenarios for a programming language. You know, what happens just for some examples, when you add numbers too high for an integer, does it overflow? Does it crash? What happens? If you have a system for basically writing down the knowledge you learn, then you have a way to basically organize it and I think you'll internalize it better too. Then when it comes to figuring out what to actually study, just pick up a book 
go through the table of contents, that's going to give you the general structure for how you should learn. And then as you're going through that, anytime you see something new, just write it down and go back to it at some point in the future. I personally haven't been tracking the word count for very long, and I think long term, I definitely won't have an average quite this high. It'll probably be closer to a thousand, or I might even drop it down to 500 if I get into a lot of new stuff that might take a little bit more time. Now with the idea of taking an hour a day and doing that for a long period of time, there is another step I suggest for you, and that is to do the exact opposite and learn as much as you can in one single day. <laughs> so this sounds contrary, but I think both of these can complement one another. Specifically, when you want to start with a new subject, I personally find it very helpful to basically crash course that subject in a single day or a weekend or a week to get as much context for that as possible. So watch a crash course online, read an entire book, whatever it might be, that's going to basically shift your mind to think in that topic. If it's a new programming language, you'll start to think in that language. Or this could really be applied to anything. I've personally done this for learning programming languages. This is what I did when I wanted to learn React. I basically found some crash course online. I watched essentially the whole thing in a weekend. Coming out of that video, I didn't really feel like I knew how to do much, but I knew how React would be used and some of the things to look out for. So when I came into a topic later, it wasn't completely new to me. It was something that I already learned at some point in the past. So I recommend starting with that crash course and then doing a little bit of studying each day for a longer period of time. The daily work is more like chiseling away and becoming smarter over time. That crash coursing is really to get motivated and change your way of thinking and basically give you a crash course of a subject. So let me know your thoughts. What systems have worked for you? This is one, I've tried a few other things before, but this one has been working very well for what I'm trying to do right now, which is build a C and C++ master course, which if that's something you're interested in, I will have a link to get on my newsletter. That's where I'll announce new content and courses that I release. So definitely stay tuned for upcoming content. If you want more of this like lifestyle, life hacking, productivity stuff, drop a comment or we'll just stick to some more programming stuff. But I think I'd like to throw some content like this in every now and again. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video. Peace out and subscribe.